kind of winked at me, went on stage and started to play, and he said, make sure you do the encore. Eric and everybody agreed that I could shoot that night. It sent all the other photographers home. So Alpine Valley, Wisconsin, August 26, 1990, I was the only photographer there. 50,000 people got in the car, went back to the hotel. I woke up at 9 in the morning, and I heard this horrible news that someone had died in a helicopter crash. What did the wreckage look like? Was it? Have started? you ruled out any entertainers as victims? Notified all of our Suddenly, my phone started ringing, and it was publicist and Rolling Stone magazine and all these people saying, look, we have to have these photos. These are the last pictures of Stevie Ray alive. And it suddenly dawned on me that I had done a rather historic group of photos. Everybody was clamoring for the photos, and I wouldn't let them out. And so for two years, I didn't allow anybody to see these photos. I couldn't exploit the misfortune of a friend. I walked him to the helicopter and Stevie said to me, Robert, if anything ever happens to me, you'll know me when you hear me. I think what he meant was that someday I would find that gift in someone else. camera has afforded me this ability to enter all these realms that I probably couldn't have gotten into. What do I do? I get paid to see. the lighting, the pose, the artist, they're moving around, and I love that environment. Photographed you? Oh, I don't know. 16, 16 17. or 17, yeah. One of the most exciting things for me was finding Kenny Wayne Shepherd before anyone knew who he was and taking his picture. And sure enough, Kenny Wayne is probably the biggest selling white blues artist in history, except for maybe Eric Clapton. These shots I got of these people when they were really young and first started are really valuable because, in some cases, I was the only photographer there shooting. Some people collect stamps, some people collect butterflies. I think I kind of collect rock stars. 